welcome back. Now the demo I'm going to do, I'm calling period of oscillation of helium balloon. I'm affording you here an opportunity when you are bored at a, a birthday party to do some physics, right? If you see a bunch of helium balloons, kids playing around, you can kind of just uh, take the helium balloon and then displace it from equilibrium and measure the period of oscillation and amaze your friends, right, to, uh, doing this uh, experiment. So we have a helium balloon here. You measure the diameter of the helium balloon, and then you measure it from the distance from the pivot point. So let's do all our measurements. Okay, it's about 36 centimeters. 36 centimeters. About 46 centimeters. Okay. Period of oscillation of the balloon is going to be what? Uh, remember the equation for period of oscillation is 2 pi. 2 pi square root of uh, the moment of inertia about the pivot point divided by mgd. So what's the meaning of the uh, moment of inertia of the pivot point? So that means the moment of inertia of this, and then this is the pivot point right here. Pivot point, right? So it's the moment of inertia of that object with respect to the pivot point. So what is that going to be? The balloon acts like a solid cylinder, so its moment of inertia is half m times r squared right half times the mass times the radius squared plus the the shift amount is the distance from here right the distance from here to the pivot point that's the shift amount that's um, uh, md squared right so you shift the moment of inertia by md squared now the meaning of the mgd is the torques on the system right so when we have this equation the only torque is due to the weight of the object, right? So we primarily use this equation in cases where you have like a physical pendulum, then you have the weight uh, at the center, let's say, mg, right? And then you displace it from a certain pivot point, right? And then the distance here is d. So uh, the, the, uh, the weight of the object is, is what is providing the torque on the system, and then the distance is from the pivot point to the center of mass, right? So in our case, so we have actually two things that are competing against each other, right? That are both providing the torque on the system. So I'm going to kind of develop that equation. We have the weight of the object mg, that's the weight of the helium, which is down. But then we have the buoyant force, the buoyant force of the uh, air on it, which is greater than its weight, right? The Fb is greater than it. Uh, than its weight. So actually the buoyant force beats the, its own weight and it causes the torque this way wanting to go this way, right? Instead of falling downward, if the mg was greater than fb, it would actually go like this and oscillate like that, right? But uh, since mg, since fb is greater than mg, so it causes it to go like this and like this, right? You know, uh, the helium balloon oscillates like this. So then we have here the the torque is going to be Fb minus Mg. So instead of just Mg, you have Fb minus Mg. And then the distance D is going to be the same distance. The, it's the same as the shift amount of the moment of inertia. And that same distance D is the, uh, the amount that we use for a physical pendulum too. It's what causes a torque on the system. So here I put D. Okay, so it's this part of the equation that we have to develop a little bit more, right? Now let's measure the actual period of oscillation, the experimental period of oscillation. You ready, set, go. Okay, that's one cycle. That's two. And then one more. Three. Okay, so that 10.3 seconds. So uh, we could do three cycles, let's, or we could even do five, but uh, let's do three again. Ready, set. That's one. That's two. That's three. 10.08 seconds. So 10.08 and 10.5, I did it twice. 10.08 and 10.5 was the second one that I got. Okay, so then I can average these two. 10.08 plus 10.5. D 
divided by 2, 10.29. So uh, 10.29 seconds, but that is for three cycles. Right, so divide that by three, and we get 3.43. So the, this is gonna be the, um, if you divide by three, this is gonna be the experimental period of oscillation. 3.43 seconds. Okay, so now let's develop this a little bit more so we can find out, well, how do I know? Do I have to calculate the actual mass of the, uh, the ball? Do I have to actually ca calculate the actual mass of the helium or what do we have to do? Okay, so now let's use the equation for buoyant force. So we have here 2 pi square root. We can uh, factor out the M, this is the mass of the helium balloon. That's the helium gas in it plus the actual mass of the, the material of the balloon. So that's to, that includes together, right? So we have here half R squared plus D squared. So this is the density of the, I'm gonna factor out the M. Then I'm gonna say the mass of the, the helium balloon is the density of the balloon. The density of the balloon times the volume of the balloon, right? And then we have here Fb, the buoyant force on the balloon is equal to the density of air, density of air minus, and then we have here the buoyant force is density of air times gravity times volume of the balloon minus, right? So I'm saying since the balloon is completely submerged in air, right, the amount of air that it displaces is the same as its volume. So the buoyant force is the density of air times gravity, times the volume of the balloon, minus, then we have here the uh, mass of the balloon, so that's gonna be the density of the balloon, times gravity, times the volume of the balloon, then we have here times distance d, right? So the, notice that the volume of the balloon cancels out, so we don't really need to know the volume of the balloon, right? So uh, then the gravity can, uh, comes out, two pi square root, half r squared plus distance squared times density of balloon over density of air minus density of balloon times gravity times distance d, right? So all I need to know is the effective density of the helium uh, gas in the balloon and the actual mass of the balloon, so in other words, the density of the balloon, and then the density of air minus the density of the balloon. Well, actually, I can perform a secondary experiment actually to find out these things. I don't because I don't really need I don't really know what is the density of the balloon, right? So then, how can we calculate that? Well, if I let the balloon go, what's going to happen? If I let the balloon go, just simply it's going to rise and hit the ceiling, right? Okay. So I can actually measure the distance. Let's say I, I release the balloon like this and the distance from the top of the balloon to the ceiling, let's say, call it D, right? So when I release it, it goes up and hits the ceiling. If I measure how long, if I measure how many seconds it takes to hit the ceiling, I can calculate the acceleration of the, the experimental acceleration of the balloon, right? So I can say uh, distance is equal to V initial T plus half A T squared, right? Then I can say, I'm gonna release it with an initial velocity of zero, and then the distance d is gonna be half a t squared, and then acceleration experimental is gonna equal twice the distance over the t squared, okay? So let's calculate what the acceleration of the uh, balloon is. I'm gonna cut this weight off, right? The ceiling, this is one meter, right? And then from here, I can go another meter down, right? So that kind of puts me down at the, where the ground is. So release this kind of right around here, right? And measure, this is gonna be two meters to the top of the, <clears throat> it's gonna be two meters to the ceiling, right? So then I can measure the time that it takes to reach there. Be ready, set, go. Two point three five seconds. So let's say average time of 2.4 seconds. 2.4, so then we get here, uh, 
construction, it was two meters from the top of the balloon to the ceiling, right? So two meters, and then 2.4 squared, that gives me the experimental acceleration. You see how much fun you can have at the birthday party? You never have to be bored. Just cut the balloon, measure its acceleration, right? And then from the acceleration, we're actually gonna be able to calculate the density of the air and the density of the balloon and all of that stuff, put it into this, and then uh, uh, estimate what the period of oscillation should be, okay? Okay, what is the theoretical acceleration that it should have, right? So you got here the buoyant force, and then the, its weight, mg, right? So fb minus mg is equal to ma, right? Times acceleration. So the theoretical acceleration is what? A theoretical is going to be what? Uh, density of air minus density of balloon over minus the density of the balloon over density of the balloon times gravity, right? So what does that mean? That's equal to 0.694 meters per second squared, which is my experimental acceleration, right? So what can I do? I can just simply take that stuff, the 0.694, notice here, density of balloon over density of air minus density of balloon G, right? This is equal to actually density of balloon, that's this thing, density of air minus density of balloon, that's this thing, times gravity. So this just becomes A theoretical times D. Right? So then I can just simply take my 0.694 meters per second squared, which is the experimental acceleration, replace it by the theoretical acceleration, right? Put it into here and then calculate what my theoretical period of oscillation should be, right? So one half, what was my radius? So my radius was 18 centimeters, so I'm gonna square that, right? And then my distance D was 46 centimeters, so 0.46 squared, divided by A theoretical is 0.694, and then the distance is 0.46, okay? So let's calculate that, and let's come up with my T theoretical, right? What was my experimental when I ran it? Okay, my experimental period was uh, 3.43 seconds. So I'm actually really close, right? Pretty close to the the experimental period. So my percent error is going to be 100% times 3.88 minus 3.43 over 3.88. 11.6% error, okay? So for doing the lab by myself, counting the period by myself, doing the time by myself, and then there's all sorts of error, this is actually a pretty good experiment. Now, if I wanted to actually calculate the density of the balloon, what could I do? Well, since I know that the, the acceleration is 0.694, right? So this could also be a way of calculating the density of the balloon. You can say density of air minus density of balloon over density of balloon times G equals 0.694 meters per second squared, right? So the density of the air, we can uh, look up a data table and then we can see, oh, okay, density of air at standard room pressure and temperature is about 1.3, 1.3 kilogram per cubic meter, right? That's in units of kilogram per cubic meter. So then we say density of balloon over density of balloon, okay, times gravity, that's 0.694. So then we can say, okay, this is 9.8, divide this 9.8. Of course, density of helium by itself, just the helium gas, is very much smaller than the density of the uh, air, right? But because it's enshrined, right, it's encapsulated inside of the material of the balloon, that's adding mass to it. So the effective density of the balloon together with the helium in there, it's a little bit smaller than the density of the air. As long as it's a little bit smaller, that's enough to cause the, the helium balloon to accelerate up. But its acceleration was not that large. It's only 0.694 meters per second squared, right? So that's why, because its density is kind of close to the air's density, right? If it was pure helium and the material didn't weigh anything at all, it would actually accelerate up a lot, lot faster. So now you can see how we can combine the two concepts, the concepts of the acceleration of an object 
in a medium that is giving you the buoyant force together with the oscillations of the object, the period of oscillation. So have fun with this at birthday parties and I hope this teaches you a lot about um, buoyancy and density and also period of oscillations. Thank you very much.